Hi guys, welcome back to House Cavani's YouTube channel. Today I'm joined with Chris Hughes and we'll be talking all things suits and racing. For me, like, it, it, it was one of those things when I got into doing the racing presenting, everyone was like, why is he doing that? He's coming yeah. from Love Island. But I've been involved with like racehorses since I was about 10 years old. So I've yeah. ridden racehorses like all my life and since I was 10 and I've kind of just yeah, grown up around the animals. So okay. for me, it was like quite an easy transition. In terms yeah. of, it's just a hobby, it's something I love. Okay. So it doesn't feel like work when yeah. I'm going there, like presenting, doing stuff with ITV. It's great fun. I do all the big race festivals with them, like the Chantham Festival, yeah. which we're obviously going to focus on with the suits, and then Aintree, the Grand National, then we've got the Epsom Derby, Royal Alaska, all those. So, I mean, I've had an absolute whale of a time, but I found the transition difficult in the aspect that for me it was my first ever time of doing like live television yeah. with like an earpiece. So I like, think the hardest part is when you've got like an in-ear and you've got yeah. people in a studio in a truck talking back to you while you're talking yeah. to an audience on TV that's live. Yeah, that's quite hard. Yeah. Then that's like, that's like the hardest thing to adapt to. But then you get fully used to it. Yeah. You can then just talk to like an audience about what you want to think while also thinking about what people are saying in your ear. So if someone wants to yeah. drop something in your ear, being like Chris just mentioned this, yeah. you've kind of got to be listening to that while still talking about what you're currently talking about. That which like probably, yeah. <laughs> sounds like too much. That's a nightmare honest. for you, isn't it? <laughs> but, but no, it's, it's been good, yeah, I've enjoyed it. So. Well, I think for me, it just, it's, I've just grown up in that whole social media kind yeah. of like world, and I think the whole influence inside to seeing people like on your explore page wearing suits yeah. and I think for girls it's like you see people in like dresses in bikinis and stuff I think it, it massively helps because you look at that and you think oh yeah that looks a good suit yeah and then I click on it and then you find out where it's from and stuff so I, I think the power of social media is so strong and whatever but yeah I, I've never kind of I've kind of just worn bits and bobs together like even when I was like before like my love island days I'd just find a pair of chinos in yeah. like a roll neck or a shirt and I'd just put a few bits together. Yeah, together. But it's not until you realise that there's suit companies like House of Gavani which provide like great stuff and I mean it, it takes away the stress of having to think oh I don't know where yeah. to get an outfit from, I don't know what to buy, I don't know. but then you do these like racing edits or horse racing edits or different sort of suits for different occasions and yeah. it just makes it so much easier. Lovely. I think it's a weird one in horse racing because in this right in the summer, in in June, you've got Royal Ascot for yeah. five days, but you've got to wear top hat and tails. That's kind okay. of like the vibe. And yeah. it's, for the last few years, I can remember it's been so hot to the point where it's unbearable <laughs> wearing top hat and tails because you're wearing black. Yeah. Like, it's so hot, like you're just dripping in sweat, and you've got to keep your top hat on. Oh. And it's just it's brutal, but. Obviously in the winter, yeah, you can wear something warmer, you can wear your yeah. rolex and stuff. But I think in the summer it's just nice that you can you can wear those lighter colours. Yeah. So you can go to like the all the other race meetings and they're they're great social events, but you can go in like your sort of like a light blue suit or yeah. you can wear those summer colours that you couldn't like necessarily. Like a linen sort of. Yeah, kind of linen like, as well, yeah, yeah, like that kind of or like the beige colour, like yeah. the cream colours, which you can't necessarily get away with fully in the winter. So yeah. for me, like horse racing's seasonal it's all year round so I mean yeah you kind of just got to find an outfit for to yeah. match the weather I'll do it from like two aspects for me like working it would be yeah. kind of like getting to work you are kind of like all prepped for what you need to do in front of the camera you yeah. kind of see the running order so you get this like low it's just a load of writing on a page which yeah. printed out literally the running order of the whole show to the yeah. it's to the second like even say we do a three and a half hour show live on air like it's to literally to the second so it could be 13 hours 52 minutes and 20 seconds and it will kind of like they'll try and stick to the time that specifically yeah. which is amazing but that's someone's job <laughs> but for me it's kind of like knowing when my hits are coming my yeah. hits are coming then preparing for that but if i'm going it's like a punter which obviously the percentage of people are it, i just love it waking up in the morning you go to the pub you make you yeah. get a guinness down you what i do anyway or me <laughs> we'll get a guinness down us full english breakfast at the pub yeah. And then kind of just head to the races and continue like, continue that vibe. A few yeah. drinks, and um, obviously you got your bets on the horses as well. And it's just a it's just a great social event. Yeah. Where you go with all your mates and just enjoying yourself, cheering horses on. Six, seven, eight races on the card, yeah. and then after that you probably straight back to the pub and continue. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, carry on. Um, just touching on the punters and the batting side of things. Yeah. Do you have any sort of Cheltenham tips? Cheltenham or tips. 
I know a few people might be. Yeah, it's kind of, of to be fair, it's kind of at that time of the year now where we're what we're now with February, so it's, it's it's about a month till the Shouting Festival. Yeah, and yeah, there's there's good horses. You got favourites of the races like Shishkin. I mean, would be a strong favourite, and he's arguably you know the best novice chaser in in the, in the country in the UK and Ireland. Yeah. So yeah, I think horses like Shishkin should win, but it's still kind of relatively. Up in the air, there's lots of handicaps. If you can pick yeah. a winner in a handicap, which is a race essentially where they're all running off, um, it's a kind of all running off level weights. It's, yeah. it's really hard because you're, it's, you're trying to pick a winner of, of horses which are all very similarly matched. Yeah. And there's about, you can get 20, 25 runner races. So a lot of it's a lottery. You need some good luck, but yeah. you kind of just got to cross your fingers and hopefully, hopefully out in the some, day. Yeah. Hopefully, I got some luck this year. But mate, some people pick horses by they'll go off the colour of their seals, yeah. the, their, the favourite name, the number, all that kind yeah. of thing. So it's whatever kind of floats your boat, really. I'm involved with a horse called Annie Mack. And she's a yeah. she's a great racehorse, and she's some, we've had so much fun with her. She was only bought for like twenty thousand pounds, which seems like a lot, but for a racehorse, it's it's, it's not. And she's won near a hundred thousand pounds in prize money, so she's surpassed anyone's yeah. expectation. But she's she's won some great races, and she won a graded race, which is like a opposed to sort of like a like a handicap or anything. Like a graded race is kind of that level yeah. that level above, and she's won a grade two. At Newbury, which was yeah, I remember that forever because we didn't we expected her to run well, but we didn't really expect her to win. Yeah, she went, right. she went and absolutely bolted up that day. So that would probably be my most memorable one. But there's so many. Like I've grown up in the Cotswolds and living near Cheltenham. I mean, I've been to Cheltenham races and the festival for so many years, and it's yeah. just a load of great days. Wow, what a question! Probably my wallet because <laughs> <'Cause laughs> I need it. it. <laughs> yeah. Better than drinking. But, um, <laughs> oh wow! What a question. Um, one thing you need is your phone because it's so easy to get like because this race is yeah. so popular now that if you like leave your mates for two minutes, yeah. or you go around the corner like you can just lose them like that. Especially yeah. like the China Festival, like it's heaving, you get sort of 60, 70, 80 thousand people there. It's just carnage. But yeah, I think a wallet. I think that's an important one. I think a you wallet. need that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. See, that's like, you could have like an expert eye on that, you can yeah. have just a standard punter's eye, but you can, even like the way a horse looks, the way, if, yeah. it, like the coat can tell a good thing. If you get a bit of like shine in their coat, and say in the winter, like the they're, they're walking around before a race and they've still got a nice shimmy, you could say that was like a, they've still got like a bit of like a summer coat on them, which yeah. shows a healthy sign within okay. themselves. So it yeah. shows that they're well, and that's always like a good sign. But a horse which, Looks quite relaxed is important. They can sweat a lot before the race, yeah. which isn't ideal because <laughs> obviously they're exerting a bit of energy. But yeah, you want a horse which kind of like is taking it all in and not yeah, too. Because a big cool race, but yeah, it keeps him. Yeah. It's like fairly relaxed in the environment. There's a lot of things you can look for, but for me, yeah, it'd be kind of like those ones. I think that I've got I've got two Royal Ascot for the fact that you usually get good weather and yeah. it's five days and it's such a social event like you've got live bands playing you have live music afterwards like it's, it's absolutely heaving but everybody's in kind of like good spirits but for me like in terms of like a racing point of view like just I just love the Chapman Festival yeah. and I love the Grand National as well the one at Entry so the Grand National that's good because that's the one that everyone tunes into yeah, and it's funny that I because it's probably the one we have it, we have all like like we get our viewing figures back from ITV yeah. of people who've tuned in to watch the live races and when you get like the Chapman Gold Cup you get Royal Ascot races you know you get between anything from between like a million or two million viewers specifically but when the Grand National's on yeah. and now they've changed the time of the Grand National to five thirty so people. Who like play sports Saturday afternoon yeah. can actually watch it afterwards. I mean, the viewing figures is up near like 10 million who tune in just to watch that race live in that moment. So it shows how popular the yeah. Grand National is. It's one of them you can have like a bit of fun and have a sweepstake with your mates yeah. and get involved in. But it's a good race to bet on as well because it's a bit of a lottery. You need yeah, a lot of those. So, all yeah. the odds are quite high, aren't they? So I have a flutter from time to time on the racing, <laughs> yeah, I think it's always, I mean, it's just, it's a good way to like, yeah. have a bit of fun and, and and keep it obviously extremely interesting as well. 
And I think I'm trying to think of my, one of my best bets, like ages ago, I can't even remember what year it was at the Chatham Festival. This is when I was just going, as just enjoying it every single day without working. There was a horse called Windsor Park, which ran on the first day of the festival on the Tuesday. I just can't, I can't really, I can't remember how much I had on it, but I, I backed it like months in advance. I was yeah. banging on about it, and I was adamant this horse was going to win. And it did win, and it was quite, it was one of those where all my mates knew I was backing it. They all kind of had a few quid on, so that was good fun. But I have backed a horse at 100 to one, at the Chantham Festival, which finished fourth in a handicap. This was again, this is going back almost, this is going back about eight years, yeah. and I can't remember the horse's name. But I know it because there's such a hype around the, the Chantham Festival yeah. that all the Irish come over and then you hear little bits and bobs of bits of information and stuff. Yeah, and this horse ran a good race, it placed it 100 to one, so I got a bit of good each way money, so I was happy enough, That's but bad. yeah, I usually bat the favourites, all the short priced horses, and. So a little bit of profit yeah. Sort of thing. yeah, exactly. And finally, question number 10. What is your favourite Cavani suit? To be fair, I love the ones we're wearing now. Yes. I think this is going to look mustard. <laughs> I, I, I'm just trying to work out, obviously I've got four Cavani suits to wear for the four days of the Channel Festival. I'm yeah. trying to work out which one I want to wear on each day. Because yeah. I need to kind of... Need oh, I need to plan events. that. Yeah, yeah, you need to plan that. That's the kind of thing where on the Monday I'm looking at more and I'm thinking, right, that's Tuesday, that's, <laughs> that's Thursday. This might be this might be the Gold Cup day. This might be my Friday outfit. Yeah. I reckon. Save save this one of the money best maker, last. Yeah, it's a money maker. I like this. And I've got the black overcoat as well. Yeah. Which you can all check out in the edit as well because they are lovely. <laughs> um, I like this, but I like um I do like the tweed one with the navy trousers. Yeah, the Caridi beige. Yeah, yeah, that would definitely be nice. For the I needed you there for the pronunciation of the, <laughs> of the suit. But yeah, that's that's a lovely suit. It's yeah. all the detailing, which makes it obviously bits and bobs on here. And the, on the one we just mentioned as well, you've got obviously like the bits of navy and the yeah, detailing in like the tweed, nice navy tweed, which kind of yeah. goes with it with a trellis. Yeah, it's going to look mustard. So lovely. I'm looking forward to it. Right, guys, thank you for joining. It's been good fun, then. Yeah, it's not been bad. You fitted me out, kitted me out. I'm ready for the races. Enjoy. You gonna come? Can we get some tickets? I'll try, I'll try. I can't promise anything, but okay. if you want to come, give me a shout, I might be the sweet one. Okay, lovely. Good man, we'll look after it. Good Bro. Look forward to it. See you soon, guys. <laughs> <laughs>